Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone at Alter Conference. Uh, it's wonderful to be here and talk about uh, diversity in tech industries. I am not a tech person. I'm an educator. And uh, my talk, as you can see up there, is barriers to access web illiteracy on the resulting fears amongst gatekeepers. Um, I personally am an educator. I have uh, lived and worked in Pakistan for about six years before moving to Canada. And um, the talk today is pretty much based on my um, master's thesis. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. But I also wanted to, I guess being an educator, I don't like talking to people too much. So this is actually what I call a round table. So I'm gonna sort of set up the stage a little bit. I'm gonna transmit, and then I would like to open this up for discussion as much as possible. Uh, and I forgot to start my timer, how's that? Um, so this was my basic research question when I went into researching for my thesis. Um, it's all nice and technical and all of that, but it basically comes out of the fact that uh, we talk a lot about what is happening in the industry in, with technology, the new developments and all of that. But what we forget is, again, as an educator, I like to catch people early. Let's get them committed to the cause early. But what, we, uh, what I was seeing was is that parents are often reluctant to let their children experience, these, uh, experience technology in um, not a meaningful way, I mean, um, but their attitude is, what I, I guess I would say, limited. Um, again, I'm going to go through these really quickly. These were, um, I was focusing on the Pakistani immigrant community in uh, the GTA. Uh, we, again, I focused on middle income families uh, because I didn't want um, the access, the financial access to technology to be there. I understand that there are other um, you know, barriers, mostly financial, uh, that would come up. But for this study in particular, I did want to see where, when you have that privilege, what do you do with it? Uh, so, you know, how do parents encourage or discourage their children from using these technologies? What are considered good or appropriate uses of technology? Um, now, one of the assumptions I made for this um, study was that these parents are middle income here, but they are from privileged backgrounds from where they come from, by extent of which they are here. And therefore, they're decision makers, they have cultural capital, they have a solid education behind them before they can even you know, think of immigrating to Canada, unless you're in a refugee status. But again, with the middle income, you sort of don't have that happening. So really, it comes back down to the research question, uh, which was, what are Pakistani, Pakistani immigrant parental perspectives and the attitudes on how their children use new media technologies and how do they encourage or discourage its use and monitor access with respect to children's safety, their culture, and their values. Now, what was... Oh, I find things. There we go. Um, what I found was that parents are un, like, unwilling to move beyond um, traditional um, roles for technology. So they... Now, every family I talked to had at least a laptop. Pretty much, uh, I think one family did not have a gaming system, but they all otherwise had gaming systems, uh, cell phones for the parents, often for the children as well. There were between one and three children for the families. And, um, but all this technology was to be used for a specific purpose. This is the appropriate way you use a computer. This is not. Um, and their lifestyles, they pretty much wanted what their lifestyles as children were to be recreated with their children. Now that's sort of an unrealistic goal because um, technology has pretty much like gone leaps and bounds since when I was a child and a lot of these people are older than I am. 
Um, and of course, parents want to maintain control over every aspect of technology use, primarily due to safety concerns. Now, these are what I like to call the dueling discourses. They acknowledge that technology is a good thing. Part of them want their children to be um, technologically aware, but the idea of something being out of their control or something being unsafe, they are monitoring them in every itsy bitsy little aspect. Um, so I did what I would assume any normal parent would do if they just come to this country and suddenly they have access to reliable internet, uh, technology that's affordable, all that fun stuff. I did a Google search. And of course, the first thing I found was Rogers. Uh, and scholarly, scholarly huh, I can't speak today, sorry, articles for internet plus children and images. But the next one, like just below that, was where things got problematic for me. Internet safety, cyber tip, internet safety, children and the internet, a parent's guide, the guardian. I was interested in that and we'll go into that a bit more. Uh, internet safety, kids rules for online safety. There is nothing about the positive out there. Like unless you actually really look and search specifically, if you just put internet plus children, all you're getting are tips on safety. And that is that barrier I feel that really needs to be broken before these children start engaging with technology in a more open way. Now, I did go into the Guardian article a little bit. And, you know, Sarah Bryan from um, this lady had, was quoted in um, The Guardian. And I don't think the internet is being taught well in school. Well, they're trying to teach a lot of things in school. What about at the home? And the issues that should be addressed are health issues, intellectual issues, and social media. Because that's all technology and the internet can be used for. And I'm just pointing these out because like the moment you do just the basic search, and let's face it, parents have a lot on them, you know, on their plates. They're working, they're looking after their kids. So they're not gonna go into deep intellectual discourses, which, you know, as a graduate student had the ability to do. But that just pretty much brings me to the question, which is how do we break the barriers of fear? Um, both due to content and sexual predators online, um, as well as the unfamiliarity with the tools, um, both soft and hard tools, uh, that allow children access, especially when um, co content is often clashing with culture. And on that, there was an interesting um, discovery that I made, which was that the parents from, um, well, the parents I interviewed from the immigrant backgrounds think of culture as culturally neutral. And we've just talked about how gaming can be culturally sensitive, how characters can be culturally sensitive. But the moment they look at a screen, the moment, you know, television screen even, the moment they look at a computer game, they're not thinking well, maybe this is a way we can um, maintain our culture or introduce our young children to our culture. Uh, so any comments or anything? I would now like to sort of open this up. Uh, so the question was um, if I have found that people, um, if people think that internet and real life are sort of separate. Does that get it? Um, yes. Um, again, these um, parents are looking at very traditional uses of what the internet can be used for. So they want to be um, users. In fact, um, 
there's a quote where one of the participants said, I'm an end user. Um, so they're happy for their kids to be online to research, which you know is an extension of the traditional encyclopedia, for example. And you know they're fine with uh, teachers having um, children type out assignments. Although I did hear from each and every parent that they are distraught that penmanship is no longer part. Uh, I'm happy never to pick up a pen again. I'm dyslexic, I can't spell. I cannot tell you how much grief that gave me. So, but those are not things that these people, these uh, parents are considering. Um, the one interesting positive spin on all of this, which I will throw out there, um, is sort of the cultural capital within North America or Canada specifically, uh, which is they want their, like the reason they have this much technology available to them is that they want to be seen as keeping up with the Joneses and all of, you know, having that cultural capital, sorry I said that, uh, and um, being seen to be progressive. Uh, so, I'm sorry, uh, your name? Erin. Erin was just sharing a story about a friend from Croatia whose daughter? Uh, uh, my friend is the same oh. age as me. Oh, I see. So um, her friend learned the language, learned English, uh, faster than her parents by consuming uh, television and um, media? It was the early 90s. Did the internet count? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did the internet count in the early 90s? It certainly didn't count in Pakistan. I, I think I had to wait like a good three minutes for like a web page to come up. Like you'd start it, you'd go to something else, then you'd come back. But yeah, I mean, um, you actually see them, uh, some of um, the parents I interviewed, doing the opposite. Because children are sort of starting to consume Western culture, but they're now Skyping with their grandparents back home uh, to learn Urdu or Punjabi or whatever the language is. Yes. Uh, so yes, the comment was uh, that uh, in the US, um, most um, internet providers are required to regulate with uh, a minimum of 13 and above um, so that children can't really access um, with their own accounts, content on the net. And it would be great to have spaces where um, they could do that, even if in collaboration. Yes. Uh, so do I think that children are more technolo technologically savvy than their parents, and if parents fear the power reversal there? Uh, children are definitely becoming more technologically savvy than um, their parents. It's, it's happening because um, now again, I am talking about immigrant communities, and as I mentioned earlier, the internet in Pakistan is still really bad. It's um, I'm self generally in the third world, you find uh, cell phones are way better than they are in the West. Um, you get reliable coverage all over the country in Pakistan, even in remote areas, and um, a lot of like diagnosis and all is done through cell phones. But internet is still pretty bad. I think in our house, and yes, I'm a child of privilege, we have three different providers, and hopefully one will work, and maybe I will get to Skype my mother. Uh, but um, so the people who are coming over are generally not that used to using uh, technology on an everyday basis. Um, you know, when I first came here, I would keep calling my mother and asking, so how do I cook this? Or, you know, what do I need to do with this? And then slowly with time, I realized oh, I can just Google that or YouTube it or, you know, what say you, uh, which was much faster, much more reliable, and I would get 10 different ways of doing it. Turns out my mother's not the best cook. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... Um, even so, I mean, my use of technology is probably not the best um, in terms of, it. I just started late. 
And so, yes, there's definitely that role reversal. And again, I, it was that end user comment that really worried me because, yes, there are issues of safety on the net. But, um, and this was a project I was trying to get started, it sort of didn't, where you can still post your artwork, your materials online and be part of a larger discussion just about that without any other of your, um, without any of your personal information coming up. And that can be pretty much international. But parents are so concerned about, you know, the health and safety issues and uh, all of that, that they're just not even considering that. Whereas, um, you know, with other things, like a book, they will read it first. But they will not sit on the internet with their child, just to make sure. And I understand those safety concerns are real. Um, so I had a thought, which I have forgotten, but OK. Any other comments? Yes. So I mean, we all know how, I mean, the Aloha just came out, and there was that whole controversy about whitewashing it. So um, you know, technology, TV, internet, and all is um, sort of whitewashed, especially what these people are accessing. So it is not culturally neutral. But they're not thinking of that as a space where their children are becoming, for lack of a better word, westernized, even though that's ironic to say since we're living in the West. Uh, but they're concerned that that is happening, but they're not acknowledging the fact that it's happening through these mediums. And um, so they're not, they're neither stopping it, nor are they, um, they're neither stopping it, nor are they using it to their benefit, apart from the occasional Skype call. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the comment was that um, it's unfortunate that parents don't see the internet as a resource for cultural interaction because uh, it is possibly the most open of the new technologies, whereas, for example, TV or film is more controlled by your big corporations. Um, that was actually one of the points. Sorry, I will just get to you. Um, what parents tend to do is actually depend a lot on official ratings. Um, there was um, this one parent who was horrified because um, she was not letting her, and this was a friend, this was not part of the study, she was horrified because she, um, was you know very carefully monitoring her child watching uh, The Walking Dead, and was like, oh, Game of Thrones, that's just fun and some fantasy thing. That's all nice. And for those of you who know Game of Thrones, it's it's not, it's it's really not. And one of us, I think, uh, amongst the friends group, managed to you know convey to her, um, your child is watching Game of Thrones. I I sometimes get offended by that. <laughs> So yes, yeah. Uh, so um, comment slash question was um, that a lot of people are more focused on building the tech rather than a lot getting access to it um, within the third world. I'm guessing more in, in or in general. So. So um, larger tech companies are not thinking about uh, the tech being accessible. So how do you do that? And that's sort of the question I'm trying to pose out there. Like, what do we need to do to break those boundaries? Um, I have attended a couple of um, conferences and things where um, more on the educational side where they're talking about cheaper. Uh, but I feel that those are not the only issues that one needs to address. And in some ways, and sort of why I'm here today is to sort of highlight this issue that in some ways I feel the discourse needs to change um, in terms of this is not just a cool gadget. This is also a tool, and this tool can be useful beyond, and you know, it's not just a tool for the stalkers to use, but it is a tool for your child to use to 
you know, find other people who are struggling with an issue. Um, I'm sorry, I forget who, but someone mentioned the pop qu the quizzes uh, in our first talk this morning about just making your life easier sometimes through the resources that are online. So I'm not sure if that answered your question or comment, but I, I feel that, again, it's always about the hardware and all of that, but we're not looking at how are we talking to the parents. Because, and these parents, by the way, are happy for, uh, to have their children participate in the discourses around things. So um, I can't think of uh, something you know, off the top of my head, but say Pokemon. They will be happy for their children to have Pokemon everything bed sheets or t-shirts and all of that. But when it comes to playing the game and understanding that the game itself is developing strategy, is developing a lot of other tools as well as then the social interactions that happen around it, um, as well as all the behavioral aspects, which is you have to take care of the cards, you have to you know, organize the cards, you have to learn all aspects of your card, again, back to strategy, all of that is sort of being ignored. They're just like, well, this is a game, so we need to not you know, do that. Um, and of course, that extends into your gaming, um, on, online gaming, online anything. It's just, no, but this is online, and so it is bad. Yes, let's. Um, uh, so um, the question was uh, that there was a, dis a lot of um, controversy, can I say, yeah, yeah. about violence in video games, and was is that discussion still happening? Uh, yes, it is. I believe it's sort of skewed a little bit more towards sexual content and representation of, in particular, the female body, mm -hmm. but... Um, I think it's now just become like that has sort of taken over the violence aspect. But I mean, this goes to my point of where parents are more and more relying on official ratings, where none of these parents would have even thought of. And this was, I mean, this was an academic study, so I wasn't able to prompt them. But none of them even thought of actually playing that video game and seeing whether that was something they wanted their children exposed to. So, yes. Uh, so the question was, how do we, uh, so, I'm sorry, your name? My name is Srushi. Rushi? Srushi. Srushi. Oh, sorry. Uh, I also have a cold, so all my sinuses are blocked. Uh, so um, Srushi there was saying that, you know, her experiences sort of match these, but it took her convincing her parents to join Facebook before she was allowed to get onto it. And, um, but... The basic question was, how do we talk to parents about this? Um, one of the major things I feel needs to happen and um, is that all those websites that, um, and this is a larger um, solution, but all those websites that tell you about child safety should also tell you about responsible use, so not just oh, these are all the things you should avoid, but remember these are all the good parts as well. I think those discussions sort of need to happen together rather than in isolation of each other. And um, with respect to how to talk to your parents about that, if you find out, let me know. I'm still trying to get my mother to use a smartphone. It doesn't happen. I keep getting messages saying, you know, my WhatsApp disappeared. I'm like. I, I joke with her, I said, well, you must have pressed the self-destruct button, and then she gets all panicked, but I, that's just <laughs> me being me. Um, but yeah, I, it's, uh, part of it is just getting them to use it, you know, on the serious side of it. Part of them is just getting them to use it, engaging with it, and understanding that it is not the devil's tool. <laughs> Although sometimes it is when it doesn't work. Yes. So um, the question was, uh, so um, a friend of hers is from a Pakistani immigrant um, family, and her parents were very um, um, conscious of internet security. So she uh, secretly went uh, around them and did what she wanted to do and totally went the other way. 
um, uh, how pervasive this is. Um, it's sort of pervasive. The problem is that yes, that is going to happen, which is what my parents were very cool with me. They said, do what you want. We better know, however, because when you get into trouble, and you will get into trouble, we, want to, we don't want it to come as a surprise. But um, so yes, it, it happens. There's no real way, and my study was far more limited than the entire community to um, be able to answer that question accurately. But um, you actually have a lot of literature about this happening in general on, um, in the immigrant experience. Because values that are coming from other countries do not necessarily mesh with values that are pervasive in Canada. So um, that was actually a great article I read about this, which were called um, like the different spheres and how uh, permeable those spheres were. So is your school life and your home life permeable? Where, or are you hiding, you know, leaving the house in one outfit and going and changing at a friend's house? And how much stress that causes? And whereas children will, you know, skirt around the boundaries, the more um, that still limits their time. There's a certain amount of time they will spend at home, so they don't get that opportunity to explore which as much as I have learned on my computer, I have done through exploration, and that's really the only way to do it, unless you're getting into hard languages, but I think I'm at about time. So I hope that brought up another issue for all of you. Thank you for bearing with me. And